Hi, this is Tim Leahy, and this is everything you ever wanted to know about tuberculosis in a couple of minutes. So tuberculosis is an airborne infection. It gets aerosolized into the lungs, and most of the time, 95% of the time, nothing happens. You, you know, the immune system puts it in a box, and you don't have any symptoms at all. You can detect TB in the lymph nodes, but who cares? 5% of the time, though, people progress directly to pneumonia that looks like any kind of community-acquired pneumonia. And of those that have latent tuberculosis when TB is in the body but not symptomatic, about 5% of the time for the rest of their lives, they can get reactivation TB when TB wakes up again. Typically, reactivation TB happens when you know, they have immune compromise like HIV or cancer chemotherapy or malnutrition, something like that, and they wake up. Those are very similar clinically, active TB that starts at the beginning or uh, reactivation TB, but we'll go over some differences. What is happening when TB is latent and in, in the lymph nodes in the chest after having been aeros uh, uh, swallowed by aerosol uh, into the lungs? Well, so these little blue things in the middle here are tuberculosis, and the tuberculosis has partly been swallowed by macrophages, but instead of uh, being chewed up and eaten and destroyed like most bugs, TB has ways of subverting that process and staying alive inside of a macrophage for decades, and so that's what these little um, destroyed macrophages are about. They, they sometimes actually die in the process and other ones just sort of coexist with tuberculosis. This macrophage tuberculosis feast is, is, is sort of surrounded by a wall of lymphocytes and other regulatory cells that are sort of sending interferon gamma signals to the macrophage saying, come on, beat them up, you can do it, you can do it. And it, it works to keep it you know, wrapped up and not going anywhere in the body 95% of the time, but it's not perfect, it's not dead. So one of the more confusing distinctions in tuberculosis world is, is the difference between latent tuberculosis and active tuberculosis. And so let me go through those. In latent tuberculosis, you feel fine, you have no symptoms. As part of a screening drive, you get either a, a PPD, a purified protein derivative skin test, sometimes called a tuberculin skin test, or a blood test for the quantiferon goal. Either one looks at immune responses to exposure from TB, the purified protein derivative is a hypersensitivity reaction. You stick a little bit of the PPD underneath the skin, wait two or three days, look to see if it makes a bump. Here you can see some redness. We don't care about redness, but you care about induration right here. That's what gets sized. And then the quantiferon, you just measure interferon gamma response to tuberculosis proteins. So people with latent tuberculosis don't have active disease, and so typically their chest x-rays are normal. They might have a little granuloma, just like a little swollen lymph node or something in the, in the uh, lungs, but nothing, nothing big, no pneumonia. And if you have that, if one of these tests is positive and they're really equivalently sensitive, specificity is a little better with quantiferon, like the BCG doesn't make you go positive. But if you have one of those positive and you don't have active disease, you get, typically, INH for nine months. It takes a while to kill that bugger, and so you have to take the drug for a long time. That makes sense because it's not replicating very quickly, and so it's not alive, and so it's not susceptible to the mechanism of the drug as much. Contrast this with active tuberculosis. So you have symptoms with active tuberculosis. There's no reason to do a screening test because you are symptomatic and they will not be necessarily positive in this context. You just do a physical exam and history and, and all that. And this time when you do a chest x-ray, it's going to be positive. It'll show you an infiltrate. You should put in your head, upper lobe infiltrate, is it TB? It's just one of those monosynaptic things you should think about. But it could be anywhere, particularly early in TB or HIV TB. It could be anywhere. So you sort of think at risk epidemiologically, abnormal syndrome that fits, it's pneumonia, ah, could it be TB? How do you know? Well, you have to do sputum studies or studies of the affected area of the body to low. You have to get these little acid-fast bacilli to show up in your acid-fast smear. If that occurs, you've, if you're in the developed world, you'll culture it and you'll do drug susceptibility testing, and you'll devise a regimen to treat it. Typically, if it's sensitive TB, you do RIPE, or rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethamutol for six months. But if it's drug-resistant TB, it's different. Contrast this with the way you did it before, where it was one drug for nine months. Here, the organism is rap rapidly replicating, and so it can obtain resistance, and so you have to use multiple drugs. But they are replicating really quickly, and so they'll respond faster, so it's not as long of a therapy. And that's all you need to know in a couple of minutes about tuberculosis.